It's Saturday morning, and that means it's time for Spartan Nation TV. With me, your host, Hondo Carpenter from SpartanNation.com. Joined by the Duckett Dynasty, legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. Now, it's time for Spartan Nation TV. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, along with the legendary brothers, Michigan State running backs and NFL running backs, the great ones, TJ Duckett and Tico Duckett. Gentlemen, first of all, demolishing win, 45-3 over Rutgers. That's what we all expected. I throw this to you since your little brother jumped early to the NFL senior day. How emotional <laughs> is that? It's very emotional. You know, when you're a freshman, you get out there and you're, your eyes are big, you're, you're wondering. But by the time you're a senior, you're counting them down. You're counting down to the last game, and then you start saying, wow, this is my last night in the Kellogg. Wow, this is my <laughs> last walkover. My last. So it's very emotional. Your parents are there. It just closes your career. And the key is if you have your next career plan, it's not a big deal, as big as a deal. But if you know this is the last time you can put your pants on ever, then it becomes a huger deal. Jessica and Okama sent me an email and asked me to ask you, what were those emotions like for you as you walked off? She remembers you walking sure. off that day, and it seemed like you were crying. I was. It was cold. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, but it, quite honestly, it, it, was, it was sad. It was like a closing of a chapter. I mean, you put it all out. You came in as a kid. You're leaving as a man. And you, you'll no longer go out on, uh, on the field as Spartan gear. I'm glad I'm part of these other chapters of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you, brother. Chapters are good. TJ, 45-3. I mean, again, we're going to pick it apart and things yeah. we didn't like. But another foot on the gas domination. I, I thought we looked good. This was, that was the best game we played all season on all levels. And, yeah, we'll pick it apart a little bit. But for the most part, they played really, really well. I, I agree. Uh, you're looking at the team, and as we said before, no, we weren't playing all together. We played well together, and now I'm hoping we peak today and roll into the bowl game. Gentlemen, speaking of the bowl games, that's a great segue from Tico. Last week we talked about potentials. Now it's starting to clear up a little bit. Let me throw a couple of scenarios. If Ohio State were to make it to the championship game, and I think if they run the table, they will, Michigan State has a very good shot at going to the Orange Bowl in Miami, taking on an ACC team. I'd love to see Georgia Tech beat Florida State and get a shot at Jameis Winston, or the possibility of the Citrus Bowl and playing an SEC team, probably a Mississippi State or a Georgia. TJ, your thoughts? I, I think that's – if we can play either one, I mean, we'd love to play Florida State just to be able to have that competition. But either one of those two bowl games, going back to Florida, but playing those teams, uh, that'll see where our program is at on national level. I agree. I, we just need to play anybody. You know, we come out, play good. It's all about recruiting. It's all about m momentum mm -hmm. going into the next yep. year. And if we can knock somebody off, that's what we need. Quite frankly, though, Michigan State has become a top 10 program where when they're not playing at Ohio State, it's, oh, Rutgers, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Maryland, oh, mm -hmm. Penn State. That really speaks to the job D'Antonio's done, though, doesn't it, TJ? It does, but we also have to start winning those games. <laughs> I mean, it's great to go in and have that type of energy with those games, but we haven't been able to win those games to actually put that pro our program on that level. You know, to piggyback on that is our program is building. And that's part of the process. We now are at this level. Now the next step is to win. Yeah. Three penalties for 35 yards. I'll take that, Tico. <laughs> I'll take that, too. Uh, where were we the past couple of weeks? <laughs> that's what we needed. But, you know, it's, he's getting them back focused, and we're starting to focus on the bowl game now, and that's what counts. And I think that after the last couple of weeks of having those penalties, I'm going to assume in practice that was heavily emphasized not making mistakes, not having the penalties away from the ball, non-aggressive penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that, again, that's how we have to go back at late in the year after the, the game that we lost against Ohio State. Probably some focus was gone. They weren't paying attention to the details. Sitting in the press box after the game on Saturday night, Tim from Perry emailed me and said, Hondo, I'd like you and the guys to discuss, was this their most complete game of the year? He said he didn't think so because of the opponent. Do you think it was? I do. I do, too. I think it had to be. It had to be, um, and we needed it. No matter who the opponent is, we said to put produce. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was complete, I think. We even had special teams involved, and it just, they, they showed well. I agree. It was a very dominating performance by the Spartans. Remember, you can watch us each and every week if you can't catch us on television. On our YouTube channel, just go to YouTube and put in Spartan Nation TV. You can watch this show. Go back and watch old shows, whatever you need. And don't forget to watch and follow all of our Twitter handles. We'll be back.
MSU Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of Michigan State University Athletics. On or off the court. MSU Federal Credit Union supports my team. My team. My team. My team. And we just wanted to say thanks. Thank you, MSU FCU. Thanks. Thank you. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Simple Tea Printing and Embroidery. We make shirts and we give back. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. Each and every year on this show, we tell you right here this week how thankful we are. And with Thanksgiving in our rearview mirror, you need to know from Tico and TJ and I and all the staff, including Barrett, whose girlfriend this week allows him to be a guy. Hey! Hey! hey. Get the light. And Get the light. Lights, 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 <laughs> lights. We want you to know we're thankful for you, and we appreciate you, don't we, guys? Absolutely. Yes, yes, Thanks, man. All right, let's talk about our thankful edition of Spartan Nation TV this week. Langford, 126 yards, 15 straight 100-plus games for rushing against Big Ten opponents. TJ, you're his guy, so let's talk love about it, him. Love it. I mean, he's running strong, and he's finishing strong. He's starting the game. Not feels like he's not rushing it. I mean, he's getting some short yardage, short yards, and all of a sudden he busts one. So as long as he's able to continue to get into the flow of the game that way, he's been running phenomenal. Absolutely. I just like when he runs, and I say it over and over, the linemen get involved. Mm -hmm. They're running downfield. The whole offense gets strong, and then that opens it up for the pass. 15 straight 100-yard games, though, worst mm -hmm. Big Ten competition, gentlemen. I don't think you can overplay that. That's gigantic, isn't it? it well, it is. I mean, anytime you could do that in the Big Ten, get 100 yards every game, I mean, that shows, you know, he has the strength, he has the ability, the durability. It shows a lot. TJ, you and Tico are among the elite of Michigan State's backs ever. In fact, all due respect to Langford, he wouldn't be ahead of you two on that list. But that's something you two didn't do. Put that into perspective for us because you're one of the greats. I mean, that's it's hard. I mean, <laughs> to tell you, to go that many games in a row to get 100 yards in any game. But what that tells you is how the, the relationship he has between his offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Because like Tico's saying, his offensive linemen, that's the only way you're able to even get close to those yardage. And his offensive linemen are down the field fighting for him every play. Cook was 67% passing, 16 to 24 for 254 yards, two TDs, no interceptions. Your thoughts on Cook? You know, we talk about Cook all the time, and on paper, Cook is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But when you watch the game, the there's certain test. things that yeah. you're just like, wow, he's throwing it over here, he's, he's flying the ball, he's fumbling. There's things that are happening that don't mm -hmm. make him look that great, but on paper, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, and it's, it's not a full confidence in him yet. Meaning you can't close his eyes and just know he's going to handle. He's going to have a good game. Right. It's he 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 may throw a pick here. He may make some bad decisions here, but at the same time he's putting up numbers. He's the team scoring. The team's making plays. But that's also the difference between where we're at as an overall program, being the top tier team or being a top ten team. Mm -hmm. How about R.J. Shelton's kickoff return? I'm glad to finally see some production on a kick <laughs> return. He put his foot in the ground and just ran. Then the same with. Geiger, how about him going? Sure. We're going to get to that in a minute. But Geiger on the fake punt, that was a touchdown, in my opinion, by the way. And then Kings just continues to you ask yourself in punt returns, what's he doing? Your thoughts on special teams? Yeah, I, I think we haven't – our special teams really hasn't been a factor this year. Um, that's a big part of the game, doing field position. Our punt team has been phenomenal, but that, that's been for the last couple years. But offensively, catching the kickoff – and getting us in great field position on a regular basis. We haven't been there. It was great to see a, a breakout this past weekend. But uh, we, got, we need to improve that over the next, next couple games. I have a nephew who's autistic, and so I'm going to credit him with this. But he said to me, Uncle Hondo, I think our special teams is special needs teams. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I thought that was funny. And I go, uh, should you say that? And he goes, well, yeah. He goes, I do. He goes, I don't know. Why can't we catch a ball and run it back on a punt return? Yeah, I thought exactly. that was kind of funny. Oh, it is funny. Good observation. All right. Cruz's run. Connor Cruz, 
the big offensive lineman. <laughs> they did it a few years ago with Joel Foreman. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm close to Connor. I know his family extremely well. I love that D'Antonio has fun on senior day. Your thought? Uh, my thoughts is just that. I mean, he's having fun. He's involved in the team. He knows how to get the morale of the team up. And whenever you have those big uglies up front mm -hmm. running the ball, that, that boosts the morale. Fires up everybody. And it was great that the team was up where you can have fun. Right. And Coach D'Antonio recognizing the point difference, the senior day, the fun of the program, the fun of the game, and putting that into play. What did you think? Mark D'Antonio has come under a ton of criticism for going forward on fourth down with Geiger, letting him run the ball, saying, hey, he's trying to run up the score, he shouldn't do that. I like it. I like that SEC, ACC, Bobby Bowden mentality that says, hey, you got to stop us. I like it. He's been taking a lot of criticism. Is the criticism fair or no? Well, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I'm glad to see him thinking outside the box. We've talked about it all the time, style points, run up the score. If you want to be with the big dogs, you got to play like the big dogs. Mm -hmm. I loved it, and, and I thought it was a great call. And you're, you're playing, even though there's score, whatever, you're still playing to make your program better. And our conversation watching the game was maybe that was a confidence booster he needed in that the kicker needed in that scenario. Because after that kick, they came down. There was a field goal shortly after. I mean, it came through smooth. And, and, swag and, back, and, as, you know? and as us fans... <laughs> That missed kicks that he had in the past, wasn't even thinking about it anymore. Right. After the game, I was talking with Geiger in the locker room, and I said to him, I've never seen you run that fast. <laughs> and he said to me, he goes, did you see the size of the guy who's chasing me? Because he's just a little kicker. Yeah, right, and right. you know what, buddy? He was laughing, and all of his teammates were rubbing sure. his head like he's it the team good. mascot. Right. Yeah. I think it was good to let him come out of a game feeling good. I, I agree, and that might have been what Coach D'Antonio was trying to do, was to give the boost the morale of that special unit. And talking about the offense, Mr. Tony Lippett, going both ways now, yeah. would have started on defense as well, except he forgot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> well, this this my take on it. I wish we would have done that earlier in the season because uh -huh. we needed help in the back, in the, in the quarterback position, and I just wish he's a, a heck of an athlete. Yeah, he was very impressive. At first, I was kind of like shocked right. to even <laughs> see it, but then watching him and seeing him make plays, it all made sense. And his ball skills yeah. are what makes him special. When we come back, we talk about Tony Lippett now on defense. <laughs> what do you do with Darian Hicks and his self-confidence? We got it all. We're breaking it down right here on Spartan Nation TV. Remember, check out our Spartan Nation TV Facebook page. We'll be right back. We're an underdog company, and I kind of, we kind of relish that role. We're not on the top of the mountaintop. You know, hopefully one day we'll be, our goal is to be number one sportswear in the world. What that happened, we don't know, but we're going to try to get there. Hi, I'm Kevin Witkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is the sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at the MSU Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of MSU Athletics. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. What are you doing about that? My name is Hondo Carpenter. I'm your host. Joined by TJ, my fastest 40 speed was 4.37. And Tico, my fastest 40 speed was 4.29. And my fastest 40 speed was... Uh, 27.4 according to the sundial. He's still running. He's still, <laughs> He's running. still, yeah, I'm still running that 40 yard dead. <laughs> Guys, we, we ended the last time we talking about Tony Lippett on defense and how good he was. He played corner in his career. This is a guy that could run back punts in the NFL. He can play wide receiver. He can play corner. We know that earlier in his career, he was the scout team quarterback at Michigan State. He was recruited at a lot of schools. He was a quarterback coming out of high school. A lot of tools. How much does it help D'Antonio? Because he mentioned this on Sunday night to me. Hey, we're out there recruiting guys all around the country, and we're sending the message. If you're good enough, you can play both ways here. How much was that, D'Antonio, though, also for recruiting, TJ? I think it was huge. I think it was absolutely huge. Um, it kind of, at first when I saw it, kind of, it was confusing. 
because I didn't know the full background of him playing uh, DB. But then instantly I'm thinking Charles Woodson when Charles Woodson was going both ways. It, it happens. And part of me even coming to Michigan State was when Coach Saban gave me the opportunity to play linebacker or play running back, depending on the choices. So Coach D'Antonio opened up the gate now for athletes that mm -hmm. may not be quite sure what position they want to play and has a chance to prove where they want to be at. 95 rushing yards, Tico, is all they gave up again. And I realize Rutgers isn't great. I'm not pretending like they're Alabama, but if they're a Big Ten team and they kept another one under 100 yards. You know, just we're repeating what we've been doing all year, you know. So that, that's what we're about. We stopped a run. We can't stop the pass that well, but that's why we brought in some help. And, you know, I wouldn't want to run against our defense. I want you to think about that because Tico just made a great point. He said we can't stop the pass real well, but we only gave up 139 yards which is still not all. If you had told Coach every game you give 139 yards <laughs> passing, right. he takes it, doesn't he, TJ? Well, well not, then when you say that, then we have to go back to where we played Rutgers. You know, we have to go back to who we played. But, you know. What does reality have to do? Yeah, how can you be an athlete? You know, You're living with your rear view mirror. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, it's all good, Handel. The defense is doing well. They're, they're gelling. They have all year. They're a stingy defense. And that's what you would expect. Darian Hicks, guys. Let's talk about him for a moment. He's a young player, a sophomore, essentially getting benched, although they're saying all the right things. Oh, no, we're just trying to <clears throat> let him ease into it. He got benched. How do you deal with him as far as a, a, as a confidence issue, Tico? I, I think it, it's good. It's competition. It's what the defense has been about all year. So, what, you know, it's going to depend on his character. If he's going to go back to the drawing board, if he's going to work harder over the summer, come back a, a different ball player, I think it's good for him. R.J. Williamson, though, he got benched earlier in the year came back, won his starting job back. I think it helps that Darian says, okay, I'm not the only one who's been benched. And look at that guy came back. I think it, I think it's we're going to see him respond, and I think it will respond big. We're going to see. I mean, we're going to find out what type of player this young man is. To be, to be benched, will he fold and completely give up and just stop training? Mm -hmm. Or will he see that as a challenge, knowing that the space is there for him next year if he can improve and get better? Let's talk about a guy at the beginning of the year switched from defensive end to inside a defensive tackle who quite frankly dominated Rutgers, and they talked about it, Joel Heath, guys, that mm -hmm. defensive tackle. To see his speed, you know, he's a 4'7 guy, he's big, he's 6'7, he's, you know, 305 pounds. You see that speed in the interior of the defensive tackle. He's impressive. He's very impressive. I remember one of my first time in the league when I'm running down the sideline and a 300-pounder is gaining on me. You know, th that's what he reminds me of. So that was I, after you lost the 4 2 Yeah, that team. was that. that I don't know. Those guys, I'll tell you. But, but you know, that's, that's what you see in him. Uh, you know, one of those professional football players that's big, fast, strong, and, you know, that's what we see out of him. We talked about this a lot on this show. They have not played a lot of defensive ends. They've played too much in my opinion, of Shalik Calhoun and Marcus Rush. I asked Antonio Sunday night, because they got a lot of reps mm -hmm. for Demetrius Cooper and, of course, our guy bulldozer Evan Jones. For you two, how excited were you to watch Cooper and Jones play together? I was glad to see more bodies on that defensive line. To see them now building their own chemistry. Them, how I mean, the, the starters, they have an amazing chemistry, how to pass Rush together. Now you have to start building some more players who can build that same type of bookend and that same type of bookend uh, companionship, if you will, of how they're going to pass rush and cause havoc on those offenses. No, I, I agree. I, I just wanted to make a point that uh, Shalik's name hasn't been called that much lately, and I don't know if he's you know taking some days, some plays off, if he's looking at you know going pro. But so this also helps the, com the competition all throughout the defensive line. I would respectfully say this because I know him and his family very sure. well. Uh, he's not even remotely thinking about it. People saying he gone, I'm telling you right now, that's not even his process. But it's hurting him. They're putting a tight end on his side almost exclusively every time. So he's getting double teamed and adding a fullback. Sure. That adds to your numbers going down, sure, too. Sure, but you got to be a beast. you got to work through that, Hondo. Especially when you run a 429 at 62 <laughs> pounds. You're watching Spartan Nation TV. When we come back, we turn our attention to the snake oil salesman in chief. That's right, the head coach at Penn State. I bet you've got some dreams. My dreams drive my passion to do what I love. To make a difference by teaching others. To make the world a greener and better place. To run my own business to see where the road takes me. MSU Federal Credit Union offers auto loans to help drive your dreams to reality. We know you've got dreams. MSU FCU can help.
This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Message Makers, creators of experiences that transform. Good morning. Welcome back, Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, of course, with the legendary. And let me just say this. I'm thankful for you guys. You know that. I'm so thankful for these guys. A man is blessed when you can look at his friends and he's surrounded by guys like this. Boy. I just appreciate that. Right right I do. I appreciate you guys. I, appreciate I, love, I love you guys. I hope yeah, you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you, too. You guys are my guys. You know that? Right. Even though. You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> That's not even funny. <laughs> what do you mean? I think that's hilarious. Look, at even Barrett's laughing. Uh, right? You guys notice Barrett's allowed to laugh yeah. when his girlfriend's not around? I can't wait till the Christmas party when I meet her. Oh, that's good. You know, he's he gonna might be... not be here. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. He's not going to ever laugh. All right. Gentlemen, we turn our attention to the snake oil salesman in chief, James Franklin. You guys know I set the Twitterverse and the whole sports world on fire this year at the Big Ten Media Days when the season kicked off. When I asked James Franklin a simple question, I said to him, after you went to Penn State, you told the people there that your facilities at Vanderbilt were better. Well, anyone that's been to both knows clearly you weren't telling the truth. And the other one was that you told your players at Vanderbilt you weren't leaving as you cried to them. Where in truth, you'd already accepted the Penn State job. You were waiting for the NCAA to clear you. And I simply said, are you a disingenuous person or just have problems with the truth. Ah, wow, he's harsh. <laughs> Dang. I'm glad you wow. like us. Well, uh, yeah, you know what? Exactly. But here's wow. the problem wow. I have. I'm a free market capitalist. I don't care if a coach <laughs> leaves because he can make more money. Sure. Don't sit there and cry to your players and lie to them and say I'm not leaving when you've already accepted the job. Well, you know, it has other... You know, do you know any other coaches that have done that? Yes. Okay. And so, I, but I'm so, that, so that's what I'm just saying. Not that it's right or wrong, but I think I know people who rob banks, the, and it's not right, right either. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I, I can understand where he's coming from. You're, you're, you've got a new job. You don't want to necessarily tell everyone you've 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 been awarded this job. So you're gonna have to probably tell a little white lie to get through okay. it. But I'm gonna ask you this because I know your character off the TV sure. set, and people are gonna th take from what you just said something that isn't factual. So I'm gonna defend you for a moment. Sure. You know as well as I do. There's ways not to answer questions. Oh, wow. Well, okay. We're all parents. Okay, so. We yeah. are ways not to answer. You don't count because cash isn't old enough. But there are ways to not answer okay. questions without sure, telling the truth. Sure. You don't lie. Okay, I got you. And you've been a he, player. He could have handled it differently. Yes. He admitted that. Yes. I don't think he liked to be put on the thing. Your <laughs> thoughts, though, to go and tell the Penn State people, oh, we had better facilities at Vanderbilt, that's like saying, hey, my Hyundai is better than your. Hyundai. <laughs> My Hyundai is better than your Lamborghini. I mean, it's just, it's so far-fetched that you have to ask, are you either misquoted or disingenuous? Well, I mean, I, I, and I don't uh, remember that, the way what happened with that. And the uh, only thing I could possibly think of from being outside of it is him trying to give the Penn State family, team, whatever, some type of hope of what he can bring to the table. Something that they can absolutely hang their hat on, like, this is our guy, and he'll provide something to us. I'm going to go right back at you because we've been friends a long time. Sure. I'm not going to name the incident because these people at home don't know. But I know when you were lied to in the NFL. <laughs> okay? And let me just tell you this. Eating lunch at you, uh, with you, after you'd been lied to, you were not saying, well, you know, right. Hondo, they were trying to give people hope. <laughs> that was not what you were saying. I can't say what you were saying. But that's two different conversations. I mean, that was the one saying that this is what's going to happen and this is what a plan was. This is one saying that this is what we have. TV <laughs> analyst <laughs> TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not saying it's right, but uh, at the same but time. I'm not saying robbing a bank is right. No, but, but. I mean, it's just, again, I don't, from a, yeah. trust me, coaches have a way of talking to, uh, you have coaches tell you you're the best player in the whole entire world. No one, he's lying to you. But you have to figure out, maybe I am the best player. <laughs> so then you go off and you work as hard as you can, and lo and behold, you become the best player. We're going to go rob a bank. We'll see you right back after <laughs> this commercial. The right moves can win a game. The wrong move can take you out. Get off the sidelines and back in the game with world-class care from MSU Sports Medicine. Our team of physicians and specialists diagnose and treat athletic and performance injuries. We've expanded our care to include pediatric sports and injuries associated with dance and performing arts. Our team will get you back on track, whatever your game. Call MSU Sports Medicine at 884-6100. I know it's funny when he hears people laughing. What? 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 Hi, I'm Kevin Whitkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. 
We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Video Vision 360. High octane, in the action, videography specializing in sports, entertainment, and adventure. And by Clauda Irish Pub. Clauda Irish Pub, home of the Guinness Perfect Pour. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Moneyball. Moneyball, it's the only way to ball. Good morning, happy Thanksgiving. I'm Hondo Carpenter. You're watching Spartan Nation TV with Tico and TJ Duckett. We start with our predictions for the week. First one, Jeremy Langford, TJ Duckett. You demand. Hmm. Will he go over 100 yards yes, today? Yes, he will. He will. They're going to try to stop him, but he will boulder his way through. I agree. He's going to keep his streak going. Next bowl game. I think that Michigan State will win out. I think there's going to be a lot of tar turmoil up ahead. I think Ohio State will win out. I think Michigan State will play Mississippi State in the Citrus Bowl. Your pick. MSU versus MSU. I like it. That sounds yeah. good. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, let's go with it. All, All right. right. Lastly, the score. I think Michigan State has a lot to go on. Not only do they have to finish the year with double-digit wins, an unprecedented feat again with Mark D'Antonio, but they are making some huge recruiting inroads in the state of Pennsylvania. I think D'Antonio goes up with his foot on the gas, and he puts it somewhere that isn't very comfortable. 38-10, Michigan State. I know you guess it. Woo! Woo. You was right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right, okay, okay. 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 No, I I I that's good. I I agree though. <laughs> I I agree. We're going to come in today. We're going to put our foot down, but it's going to be a fight. I say 35-28. 28. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. The last time you predicted that many points, we bet. How about that green tie? <laughs> oh, man. Amy Joe, I'm trying Do to it. find out if he's a man or if he's I mean, going the way of Barrett. They, 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 that means they, the tie. They're going to come wait, in. Wait, wait. Steak and lobster dinner for you if they put up 28 points or more. I wow. get the green tie and I'll wear it on next week's show if they hold Penn State to less than 28. Okay, it's a bet. And I'm not giving the tie back All this right. time. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> Amy Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 28, I'm going to say 28-17, Michigan State's going to win this 28, game. 28-17? Yes. Wow. I think it's, se it's, senior, it's senior day down there. You're going to bet him And too? they are going to absolutely. Know, no, All right, no I'll right. make a bet with you. Uh, <sighs> what? <laughs> you say they score 17. If they score 17 or more, I'll write a check on this show next week to your philanthropic organization, the New World Flood, of which okay. I serve on the board. Sure. If they don't, okay. you'll write a check for $100 to the New World Flood. Oh, yeah, easy. Right here on the show. Ding, 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 Spartan ding, Nation ding, TV will see you next week. <laughs> Guest of Spartan Nation stay at Country Inn and Suites. Curtis Grimm. <laughs>